This is LA Prepper, and before I start my video, I want to give a quick shout out to Die Bullfrog79. Let's help him reach his goal of 200 subscribers. Uh, anyways, that's one of his current goals, 200 subs. So he's already 45% uh, of the way there. He's got 90 subs, so that's pretty cool. At any rate, the topic of today's video is 10 Prepper Skills for Life. Or maybe a better title would be 10 Life Skills that will help you be a better prepper and prepare you for an uncertain future. At any rate, let's get right into the list. Number one, working with your hands. I think it sort of goes without being said, but uh, you're not always going to be able to call the plumber, the carpenter, the handy guy, the electrician, um, the auto repair person, etc., etc. So being able how to do even rudimentary things with your hands, uh, I think, is going to be quite invaluable. It's, it's valuable today, if not as a way of making money and providing service to other people, at least as a way of saving money yourself. Um, a few of you may recall my $700 for a new faucet plumber story. Now granted, I'm in an apartment, but if you're in a house, that's $700 out of your pocket. Or you could spend less than $100 in a few hours on YouTube and, you know, do it yourself. So, what would you do with $600 in preps? You know, anyways. Uh, it's just so many good reasons to work with your hands. Um, it's never going to be a skill, in my opinion, that is worthless. I mean, even if you get to the point where you're so rich that you can just pay people to fix everything and you got to be making deals so you don't have time to be playing with the wax ring on your toilet, um, it's still, I think, a good fundamental to have, if not only to communicate with other construction professionals because, you know, anywhere from building a shed to, you know, having some guys over to come fix your fence, uh, you know, let's say they're digging, I don't know, 18 inch holes for your fence post and you go take a look and say, hey guys, why aren't you digging 24 inch holes or why aren't you digging 36 inch holes for these fence posts? Um, you know, being able to ask intelligent questions when you're working with people in different trades is kind of just like a small benefit of being a little bit familiar with, you know, the physical world. So it's kind of a complicated, I don't want to say a complicated topic, but there's a lot of different ways you can work with your hands. Um, not just to say that, you know, learning how to fix stuff is like the most important one or the only one you should look at. But in general, just being able to do things with your hands, I think, you know, and gardening and cooking and kind of like anything that you're, you know, cooking is kind of like a separate thing, but anything in life where you can, um, you know, use your hands to kind of, you know, in the in the physical sense to make, create things, build things, fix things. I never thought about trying to define working with your hands. I guess it's kind of tricky to define. You know, I don't count like mopping the floors, working with your hands per se, but at any rate, number two, communicating with people. I think whether or not you're, you know, unless you're really going to be the guy living in the forest or gal living in the forest by themselves, um, you're going to need to communicate with people, uh, whether it's pre shit hits the fan, post shit hits the fan, uh, even if you're bugging in, if you're bugging out, um, no matter, no matter what your prepping future has in store for you, communicating with people is going to be important and not just so you could trade, you know, some pine sap for some chicken. Um, could be a lot of different potential scenarios when your ability to communicate uh, potentially could even be a lifesaver. Um, for example, let's say you're with a small group, an ad hoc group, survival group that you just formed and shit hits the fan out of kind of necessity for whatever reason, you're on the same place, something happened, you got to kind of stick together, okay? Now let's say you have a couple of options of, you know, I don't know, you, let's say you have to move a few miles and maybe there's a mountain range and some bad weather or something coming. And some people in your group think that, you know, the need to leave is so important that you should go out hiking in the middle of the night in a storm 
somewhere that none of you have ever traveled before because getting out of the area is super important and maybe you have a little more outdoor experience and you're thinking, wow, starting a hike in the middle of the night in unfamiliar terrain and awful weather is probably not a phenomenal idea, but unless you can convince the group that leaving in the morning is a better plan, if the other individual trying to instigate the let's leave right now in the middle of the night plan wins, then all of a sudden your group is kind of at a a disadvantage because you're you're going to put yourself into a potentially dangerous situation. That's just kind of one hypothetical, but the point is being able to communicate your ideas, whether one-on-one or one on a group or a group to an individual. Um, it's really important for a lot of different uh, situations in life. It's just such a good life skill that it's something you should always be striving uh, to improve. Number three, how to cook. Uh, you know, saving money is a real great reason to learn how to cook. Um, eating healthier, another great reason to learn how to cook. Uh, it's a good way to spend your time. Uh, it's a good skill to have. You know, you're not, typically people don't regret improving their cooking skills. You know, if you learn how to bake a cake, I don't think you're ever going to think, damn, I wish I would have spent that two hours, you know, learning how to make cakes on, I don't know, learning how to make fire instead or something. You know, generally, the better you get at cooking, it, it kind of, it helps improve the quality of your life, the quality of your food, savings, um, even your, you know, emotional, mental state. Cooking can be therapeutic. It's fun. It's nice to be able to create something from nothing or even something from a package. If you're like me, opening packages all the time. So, so many good reasons to cook. Uh, number four, basic outdoor skills. I know this is a really wide topic. I might need to make uh, a separate video about this doesn't mean you have to be able to start a fire with a bow uh, bow drill necessarily but um, you know starting a campfire a few different ways basic navigation skills um, different types of shelters dressing appropriately for the outdoors uh, dangers of the outdoors whether it's wild animals plants um, even things like you know, dangerous terrain, dangerous weather conditions. Um, th there's there's a lot of different types of outdoor skills, but and you don't have to go camping every week or anything like that, but just kind of think, you know, in the back of your mind of always trying to be improving your outdoor skills, even if it's just like practicing chopping firewood, um, you know, learning how to use an axe or a hatchet safely. You know, every little bit helps, or learning how to sharpen a pocket knife or... Uh, you know, something like that. Um, it all helps. It all helps in the long run to building, um, you know, a greater insurance policy, if you will, and to being kind of a complete whole person that has some flexibility as far as what kind of challenges you might face in the future. Uh, number five, situational awareness. This was something, this was a term that was a uh, taught to me by the uh, Air Force, uh, of all things, when I was a ROTC for a year, playing pseudo Air Force cadet, if you will. Um, and the basic idea is that at all times you should have kind of a rough, just kind of familiarity, what's going on in your general area. It doesn't mean, you know, you have to be looking behind you every two minutes or something like that, but just to be a little bit aware of people around you, what's going on around you, um, things like that. Uh, feel free to Google situational awareness if you want maybe a better definition than that, but just trying to be, you know, conscious of your surroundings, generally speaking. Uh, not as important before shit hits the fan, you know, depending. Um, it's always good to be aware, but certainly after shit hits the fan, it, you know, it's going to be night and day as far as how important it is to, you know, keep your head on a swivel and such. Number six, uh, basic internet and computer skills. This might seem counterintuitive, you know, power's going to go off, society's going to end, why do you need to learn how to use a computer? Well, we're not just prepping for things to break down, we're prepping for all scenarios. And one scenario is that society never collapses. So, since we're living in a very high-tech world and since there's so much valuable information out there to be found online, why not spend some energy and time learning how to use the internet, use a computer, write a Word document, use Excel, put a PowerPoint presentation together, 
um, make a YouTube video, how to make a simple website, how to join a forum, how to blog, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of HTML, how to code in a couple of things. You know, I've never used my coding for anything other than like the MATLAB stuff for school. I haven't done a lot of stuff with the Java that I've learned. You know, I've done one thing on my Arduino. Um, but just to kind of give yourself a little bit of breadth in this world, uh, you will probably not regret learning, uh, familiarizing yourself with how to use the internet. Um, like for example, I was telling my friend about the website Meetup the other day. He'd never heard of it. Um, so, you know, I'm like opening this whole new world of like events that he could go to and people he could meet, you know, things like that. Maybe people haven't ever heard of, you know, GoFundMe or Kickstarter or TED or, you know, Reddit or any, any myriad of things that, uh, collect ideas and people and, and help us all share with each other. So whether or not society, you know, is going to have potentially monumental issues in a week, a month or 10, hundred years from now. 10 or 100 years from now, not 10 hundred years from now. Um, in the meantime, you're going to be on the computer, probably, hopefully not all the time, but a little bit. So learn how to use a computer, improve your computer skills. Uh, there's tons of videos, there's classes. Uh, one thing you can do is to kind of integrate it into your hobby. Um, if you're not, if you can't think of a reason to build a website, use it to talk about prepping, use it to send people to YouTube, use it to sell your homemade, um, like I know, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the name. Um, one of the guys who has a channel was talking about, yeah, Step One Survival. He does a leather craft. He makes little um, like leather craft stuff. So like he could make a website that took PayPal payments and stuff like that. So you can, if you think hard enough, you can figure out a reason to kind of reasons to integrate different online stuff into your daily life. So it doesn't have to be I'm just going to make a website to learn how to make a website. Make it part of uh, stuff that you're doing. I have one to help me find a job. I have one talking about my bug out boat or my windsurf moran. Um, I don't have a prepping website yet. Maybe someday, but not yet. Number seven, finance money management. Of course, a pretty common life skill for preppers. I think it's even more important though because most people, if they don't have a lot of savings, they kind of think like, well, you know, if shit hits the fan, you know, as far as like losing a job, maybe I'll live in my car, maybe I'll live with my parents, I'll, there's always another job out there, maybe I'll get food stamps, maybe I'll get unemployment, you know, there's not really that strong sense of urgency as far as, you know, needing to be more frugal and fiscally responsible. I certainly haven't always been the most fiscally responsible person. I've had credit card debt, I've had, you know, crap like that to deal with. Uh, I did overcome it through discipline, through luck, through talking to some of the right people, if only through chance. I talked to a few people that um, were helpful. Also kind of relying on some of the life skills, communicating with people. The Some of the credit, debt, tax people that I spoke with were very helpful in assisting me uh, getting my financial house back in order. So um, it's, it's so important whether or not society collapses to be frugal. You know, do you think you're not going to need money management if the shit hits the fan? You're still going to need to have a collection of value for your own safety. Um, maybe you need a part for something or, you know, no matter how much you prep, maybe you just break something, you know, I don't know. Maybe you have a generator, but the generator is having issues, and of all the stuff you learned how to do, you never learned how to fix generators. So you got to barter something to somebody else to help them so that they can help you fix your generator, for example. Um, if you don't have something of value saved, or if you don't have skills that you can barter, you know, being able to create some value, save some value for the future, it's important. Number eight, self-sufficiency. Does this mean you have to go off-grid tomorrow? No, but the idea is you want to increase your self-sufficiency throughout your life. Um, try to rely on oil less. You know, do I have a car and do I drive it? Yes. Do I drive it everywhere? No. I have a bicycle. I can walk. Um, I could have stuff delivered to my house. I do have stuff delivered to my house sometimes. I'm not paying exorbitant money to have stuff delivered, but... You know, sometimes I might buy something on Amazon and 
have it shipped to my house instead of going to the store for a five dollar thing you know it's gonna cost me anywhere from three to six probably about three to ten dollars to go to any variety of stores that I go to so to pay six dollars in gas or five dollars in gas to go to a store to buy a five dollar thing you know it's kind of a waste of money so self-sufficiency isn't about becoming fully self-sufficient tomorrow it's about increasing your self-sufficiency over time um, learning how to fix more stuff as you go um, trying to supplement your income with more stuff that you're doing on your own um, trying to get out of paying rent you know being self-sufficient as far as the roof over your head I'd much rather have an annual property tax obligation than an annual rent obligation so trying to increase your self-sufficiency number nine mental fortitude this is something a few preppers talk about um, it's something that in part you can train yourself through conscious effort and in part you just kind of need to at least in my opinion you just kind of need to live a little bit of life um, you need to fail you need to have struggles you need to face things that are scary sometimes uh, you need to go through trials and tribulations I think it it makes you a more complete person and generally those that reach higher fail harder um, and more frequently because they're reaching you know beyond their comfort zone I have failed a lot in life um, I've had a lot of successes too I think more successes than failures I never thought about comparing the two but I've had some big failures in life and it has certainly been uh, interesting to say the least but at the same time I think that I've learned a lot from you know the different things that I've struggled through and become a stronger person for it you know whether or not we have society or we don't being able to deal with uh, things that weigh on the mind whether it's difficult relationship stuff money stuff uh, other life stuff, health things, uh, physical stuff, uh, you know, there's so many things that can weigh on us in the course of day-to-day -day life. Even if you're not talking about prepping, even if you're not watching the news, um, just life happening by itself sometimes can be, you know, stressful and, and cause all sorts of different emotions, right? Um, especially these days though, you know, money, looking for jobs, trying to get ready for an uncertain future. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, there's a lot of things that you know are going on right now and it can be a little overwhelming which ties in well to my number 10 but in general you know I'm not an expert on how to increase your mental fortitude not not remotely um, if I was gonna try to give advice to you on that gosh I don't even know um, I don't know I'm going to ask, you know, YouTube, I'm going to ask you, some of you that have lived a longer and more challenging life than I have, how would you recommend people increase their mental fortitude? I'm not really sure personally. Uh, you know, I think experience helps a lot. Taking some conscious effort to improve it helps a lot. Um, sometimes seeking help of professionals can help, for example. Um, so at any rate, number nine, mental fortitude. Number 10, organization. This may seem like a funny life skill, but, uh, you know, preppers are known for a few things, but some things that they're known for, two things in particular I'm thinking of is one, seeking out information, and two, um, acquiring goods, preparing, stocking up, you know, classic prepping. I'm gonna buy a bunch of this and buy a bunch of that, right? to sort of, you know, use the one of the unfortunate generalizations of preppers that they just go buy a bunch of stuff, right? So how does organization play into that? Well, whether you're trying to find information or find your pocket knife or your multi-tool or your suture kit, you need to know where it is, right? Um, for example, I'm doing a lot of hunting stuff and rather than just have dozens and dozens of bookmarks, I'm just keeping a really simple Word document I might shift to Excel because I'm kind of an Excel nut, but I'm just keeping a simple Word document with all the different hunting regs, you know, what the seasons are, what the methods of take are, um, just so that I don't have to look at 10 different pages 
uh, to kind of figure that stuff out. Um, if you have a workshop, if you're working on projects, uh, shout out to PB, keep that project going. Shout out to Rob Painless, you know, keep that, uh, want to take you painless. I want to see you take a trip to the scrapyard with all that stuff, see how much money you make, right? Um, but organization is super important. Uh, it's just going to make your life easier. It's going to help you transition between doing different stuff. You know, preppers are always doing different stuff. They're they're cooking, they're storing stuff, they're fixing stuff, they're working on this project, they're working on that project, they're acquiring this, you know, they're always got a lot of different things going on. And if you don't keep well organized, it's just gonna be a headache for you to switch from one project to the other. You know, say you're working on project A and you gotta order a part and it's gonna take two weeks for the part to get here. Well, now you gotta switch to project B. Well, if you don't have Project B all neatly laid out in duffel bags and boxes in a certain area of your workshop, it's going to take you a week to transition into Project B, and that's going to give you a headache. You might not even feel like doing it. So there's so many reasons to stay organized, but just saving time and saving mental anguish are probably two of the best reasons. Uh, the more time you save, the more time you can spend on prepping, on completing your projects. So. There you have it, uh, probably too long of a video for Die Bullfrog 79, but those are some top 10 prepper skills for life that are gonna help you live a better, fuller life and help you prep more. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.